right, everybody. What's happening? Chris Nordine here. We are doing our experimental show, which is a spin-off of The Gathering Point. This past Tuesday, two days ago, was our 136th show for The Gathering Point. We are the Glass Academy out of Dearborn, Michigan, about 10 minutes outside of the city of Detroit. And we are excited to get crazy with you today and do something very experimental that I've never done before. I've got Brandon over here. Take a shot at him. He's going to be assisting me today. He's one of our uh, amazing apprentice glass blowers here at the Glass Academy. Uh, we've got Marcy on tech support right here. She may even have a microphone on. Marcy, can you say hello? Hey guys, hope you all are doing well. All right. We are live on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube right now. So we're live on YouTube, Facebook, and itch. Just Twitch. kidding. <laughs> I had an itch though right here. <laughs> but uh, you know Michelle and Jake are out of town. Uh, they're headed down south and they're on vacation for a week, maybe a little longer. And Marcy and Brandon and I are holding the fort down here at the Glass Academy. We got Zach on the camera, guys. We can't neglect him. There he is. What up? So we're pretty excited today. I picked out a couple of interesting words out of the hat on Tuesday nights. That's how it kind of works for the experimental show. We pick two words or two picks and it could be a tangible item, it could be a word, an expression, a feeling, something. At least that's what I got when I picked mine. And they're right here. And the words that I got were glowing and celestial, which I figured out what I'm going to do, and they were kind of interesting and not the easiest things to interpret for me into the glass, but I did come up with something kind of cool. So why don't we come on over here and take a peek at what I drew on the floor, because I'm feeling like it's pretty celestial, and I'm also feeling like I'm going to make it glowing. I'm going to do a, a crown of thorns that's glowing literally with like an iridescent halo over a deep orangish yellow glow from the core of the crown. So it almost looks very heavenly and very religious and very crazy. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I've got Brandon bringing me some bits, which I kind of went over explaining to him what I wanted to do. Uh, we've got a few, maybe, I don't know, housekeeping wise, our, what is it, day five of our 12 days of Christmas for the Glass Academy, day five. And I know that uh, the item is the Michigan Icicle. It's right here. Check it out. And I know that those are, when are they gonna be on sale? This Tuesday on uh, the web, Marcy? Is they that when they're be. sold or are they on the website right now being sold? I don't I'll know. Find if, out. I'm not sure if they're revealed online, but you can get these items online at glassacademy.com. Uh, today's show is not about us selling glass like uh, other, you know, times we reveal items. We're just doing the experimental action here. It's really cool to let uh, all of you folks in on when we're messing around with the glass, just allowing ourselves to express ourselves, making something really cool. Uh, I've got some cool colors right here. If you want to come around this way uh, and take a peek at them, Zach. We've got this saffron, and it actually becomes a lot more orange, and it becomes very electric and a, a glowing. And then I've got a really nice uh, dark kind of twig-like brown with the iridescent gold. When I have Brandon bring me these thorns, I'm going to be putting that all over it. But the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make the main circular portion of the, the crown of thorns and then Brandon will start bringing me bits and I like talking through this with you guys and I like talking through it with Brandon so he knows what we're doing and you know what we're doing to, so what to expect I want to get started on the piece uh, I'm gonna pull out another large punny because I did take that first gather to start the thorns and do the glow-in-the-dark core so I'm gonna pull out another bit for the punty All right, I got a bigger punny. This is gonna be the piece that is going to be 
the core, I'm gonna take one gather, I'm gonna coat it with that saffron orange, and then I'm gonna gather over that and put my stick and twig iridescence on the outside and start cutting that up into a really cool thorny pattern and hopefully pull that out in a symmetrical fashion to get the base of the crown of thorns, you guys. You can't gather molten glass on the end of a cold blowpipe. This blowpipe I just pulled out of our locker. Uh, we're going to heat it up nice and red hot on the end and then I'm going for the core. Brandon and I had a great morning this morning busting out some, some cool product. We did some really sweet stuff, got into some production mode and uh, we're gonna do a little bit more uh, in the afternoon. Almost ready, but I'm gonna go in and get my gather. So I have a nice gather. Look at that little tiny bit of glass there. This is gonna be the core, just so that it's got that glowing effect that I've talked to you guys about. So I'm gonna put two nice coats of saffron on there. Maybe even a little bit of iris. So we get a little bit of that milky, like, celestial feeling to it. I'd like to know who wrote those words up. Michelle or Jake? If you guys are out there and you're watching us while you're driving in the car, you should definitely let me know who wrote them up. So once I get this core filled up with color, I'm gonna gather over it. And what I'm purposely doing is I'm leaving it texturous because then I'll trap some very, very, millions of very minuscule air bubbles in there so that it has a little bit more organicness to it. Little reduction on the outside. Oh yeah. This is looking pretty heavenly, everybody. Very heavenly. Look at how we got that iridescence on there. That's a pretty sweet color pattern. So I wanna make sure that's got a nice chill to it, probably bound to about maybe 1400 degrees because if I go in and try to gather over this piece now, I won't even be able to support the, the amount of glass that I'm gathering out of it because it'll be too loose. So I've gotta let this get a little stiffer. See how it's getting harder? This is looking pretty good now, guys. My mic's on. All right, encased. Now I wanna add some of that woody branch color and iridescence on the outside, but I don't wanna add so much that it's not transparent because I want that brilliant, uh, like opalescent orange to be glowing on the inside. So I'm just gonna go in and hit some miscellaneous browns and a little gold on there. And that's about all I wanted to get on the outside. Now I gotta start thinking about cutting it up and getting some of those uh, spiky branch slash thorns on there. Now these are the things that cut Jesus' head when he was hanging on the cross, folks, and when he was carrying that cross around. So we're not going to get into too much of the religious side of uh, the crown of thorns, but we do know that it's very heavenly and it's very celestial. Watch this now. Looking pretty cool, look at that. Looks like that could be something you could like uh, go down your drain in your backyard, Jake, with this sucker. Eh, get rid of all the branches that are getting into your drain. If anybody needs a reader rooter or whatever it's called, you know, you need a snake, 
Hot glass might do the job. So now it's all about gravity and about having the right heat, guys. So let's see what happens here now. Looking pretty thorny. Not enough, what the heck? There we go. Oh, I like it. I kind of don't even mind this little guy here, but we're not going to be messing with him. Bam! Burned a hole in my pants. Better than my leg, though. All right, how about a bit for that punty? At least it didn't land on my, like, cheek. Guys, that would have been too fun at all. But I want to get myself a little bit of a better point to cut this thing off. So I'm going to heat this up. Go ahead and take a gather over that. and get So you got twice as much and then add a little of that golden brown on it. Okay, that's beautiful. Go ahead and get your uh, boat, little boat. You know, one a little bit on one side, a little on the other. It's gonna be great. So you see, the piece that I made is too big to go into the glory hole all the way. So I had to open the door up. Go ahead and heat that up, and you can bring it on over to me. I'm gonna put this on the end, and I'm gonna sculpt it into a thorn branch. But I'm gonna leave a a chubbier part onto it so we can punty up onto it. And he's going to immediately go over there and put a punny on it. That's looking good, my friend. Right over here. Steady. Good. Yep. You're, this is a punty, so bring me the uh, the big punty. Uh, it can work. I can use it. I'd like to have the bigger punty, though, like the rod, the big rod over there. So go ahead and just uh, shit can that and grab the other one. You got it. Perfect. Nice. So, okay, shape that into a mar, uh, into a punty, if you would. Very gently, pushing forward slowly. Looking good. Beautiful. Looking great. You got to stay on the bottom right so I can get in there. There you go. Looking good. I'm going to come out and we'll go right for it. Steady. Okay, heat that up. Mm. 
looking pretty cool. Nice bit work too, Brandon. So that size was beautiful and the way we're putting them on is beautiful as well too. Okay, how about a new one? So the recap, what's happening here, guys, I picked out of a hat on Tuesday during our live feed show called The Gathering Point here at the Glass Academy. I picked out two specific words that pretty much are my guidelines for the piece that I'm making today. And they were celestial and glowing. So I'm doing a glowing from the core celestial crown of thorns uh, that was probably on Jesus Christ's head. And it's looking pretty darn cool. Check it out. It's kind of nice when you're building something organic like this because you can't really tell if it's symmetrical or, or not until you squint your eyes and look at it. You got enough on there? All right, get it hot. I'm still moving pretty good. Okay, I'll take it. Steady. Okay, go heat that up. It is looking pretty sweet, isn't it? Told you guys, I'd never make something like this. It's an experiment. That's why this is the experimental portion of our show. Okay, go ahead and heat that up one more time. What? Julie, what's up? Thanks. Getting buck wild out here when, uh, when Michelle and Jake are out of town. Who knows what's gonna happen after lunch. Okay, bring that pup on. Yeah, everybody keeps commenting four words, and it's all just random four words strung together, and it's kind of amusing. Thanks for commenting four words, guys, to boost our signal. Okay, keep them coming, baby. You notice I've got to keep reheating the piece, you guys. I got to equalize those bits I'm putting on all these thorn branches uh, and I got to let the rest of it cool down and the coal parts heat up and equalize. Check it out when I come out. Look at that. It's looking pretty cool. The one thing you can't see right now is you can't see that glowing core because you can't see the true colors of the glass. Well, the glass is hot like this, guys. Ooh, I like being able to shape the whole mass. But my natural instincts is to make it perfectly round, like some type of Venetian goblet, perfectly symmetrical. Go ahead and put another coat of that, those colors on there. And I don't want to do that. Generally, most people start beating on a piece and shaping it and banging it around and it'll be all asymmetrical and crazy looking, but for some reason when I beat on a piece and shape it around and try to mess it up, it just ends up becoming nice and symmetrical again. I don't know why, but this piece is looking good. I love it. 
I guess I could say thank you to Michelle and Jake for giving me this opportunity since they're the ones who normally do the experimental show. Let's go for it. Yeah, where's everybody from now, guys? Where are y'all from? We got anybody from Cucamonga out there? Zach visited Cucamonga once. He told me. He was like, yeah, I went to Cucamonga and it was crazy. Remember that, Zach? I know. We won't get into that anymore, but we don't want to we don't want to mess with people from Cucamonga. I heard they're pretty crazy. What'd you say? What happens in Cucamonga stays. Exactly. That's what Brandon just said, guys. What happens in Cucamonga stays in Cucamonga. Looking good, get that hot. That looks to me like it'd be pretty painful to be putting this thing on your head. Getting any good zoom shots in on this when I come out, Zach? Yep. One more off of that, heat it up. things to think about when you're doing something like this that barely fits into the hole you guys is just stay calm make sure you get enough heat on this thing that it's not gonna crack and then all you're just dealing with is just some glass that's moving check it out and I'm definitely got got it moving but I want to make sure that I don't let this get too cold I'm gonna put a little heat after this piece on the Lift, pull away, pull, good. Nice, thank you. Another one. Another bit yeah, you can bring another bit. Mm, looking good. I gotta get some heat on that punty, guys. The punty's a little cold. Michelle's probably driving in the car going, eh! Look at the pony, get some heat on it, Chris, get some heat on it. When her and I work together, she's always really, really good at making sure that uh, I'm thinking about everything. And I do the same thing when I'm working with her, You, because sometimes you get so distracted on a new project like this that you forget that you want to get a lot of heat on the punty. So I'm getting the torch on here. I don't want this thing to break. We got too much time in this. It's really looking cool. Go ahead and heat it up and get a couple more coats on it. I want to get a nice good heat on it so everything starts moving again. That way I make sure that everything is in the right way. So this is the big cooker right now. That's looking great. Go ahead and get under me. Oh yeah, look at the heat on that. I love it when it comes out hot, guys. So Brandon's got, this is probably what, number six or seven? And we got like three bits off of each one. All right, Brandon, let's do it. Who? John Dingle Dinkenheimer Schmidt? I know that guy. Yeah, he's telling me to wrap the pony. It's looking a little chilly. 
Or that works. Don't hit I it can, on things. I can rap to the punty. We got ourselves a real good punty. Oh, man, it looks like my honey. That's not sounding too good. I'm not a rapper, guys. But we got more bits coming on here. What's really gonna make this thing go crazy is when we bring out all that magical, heavenly, celestial iridescence. That's what I'm talking about. Jake and Michelle, you guys better pull over when that happens because I don't want you guys getting so excited that you end up uh, ending up in a ditch with the RV. All right. Another one off of that. Yeah, so we heard, uh, anybody have any celestial stories out there? You know what's coming up is Christmas. A lot of other holidays during the holiday season, but I'm sure there's a lot of celestial action going on with people going to midnight mass and people decorating their houses and spirits sneaking around in the night, Santa Claus coming, whatever. If that's ready to go, I'm ready. I'm looking for holes to balance this thing out. And I see a few. One of them's right here. Steady as she goes. Okay, heat that up. Marble that off. Pull it off a little bit. Yo, my finger. What'd you say? Oh, breakfast, I like it. Well, then they're probably gathering up some molten honey, just like the glass and dripping it all over their oatmeal or their grits or their whatevers. All right, Anybody another got one. A favorite like breakfast food, bacon, eggs, cereal, pancakes, waffles, grits even. I think we need another one. We'll put a few more on and we're going to be done. But this puppy is looking good. Let me get a good flash on it and I'll bring it over and show you guys. Uh, this is the experimental action, folks. The crown of thorns. And mind you, that whole round section in the middle is going to be bright, glowing orange from the core on the inside. Looking good. Get some good coats on there. And this will probably be our last bit. Yeah, go ahead and go right back in the color now. That's good. All right, I got a real good heat on this now, guys. So it's moving and I'm feeling real confident that I got a good base of heat. I'm gonna hit, a, hit the punny just a little bit more here. Whenever I hit the punny, I make sure I don't hit it on the connection point. If I hit it on the connection point, it'll fuse it to the piece. And I don't want that. I just wanna have the moil itself of the punny. All right, I'm ready when you are. Okay, heat that up. You don't want any crown of thorns with some soft looking thorns. You want it to be heavy duty, guys. That's right. 
Not too many. I got a couple more spots and this thing's going to be done. If you guys don't know about it and you're new to the show, we're the Glass Academy in Dearborn, Michigan, about 10 minutes outside of Detroit City. Uh, we do classes, we do events, we've got all kinds of amazing products on our website. And we do a monthly show, we've been doing it, our next show on Tuesday will be show number 137. And it's going to be, it's called The Gathering Point. Okay? I'm ready for that bit. And this is the kind of crazy stuff we get into on the gathering point, guys. Heat that up. Hey, we got somebody on Twitch. What's up? Glad to see ya. Saucy little vixen. We are making a crown of thorns that is heavenly and celestial and crazy. And I'm almost done with it. I got one more bit to put on here. And then we're gonna equalize the heat and we're gonna bring out all of the iridescence so that this thing has got some glowing action, one of my keywords, and it also has some heavenly connections. Mmm. I see where it's gonna go, let's do it. Where'd my spot go? I might get another one off of this, sorry. Go for it. Apparently Kelly Robinson is completely laughing at you because of an internal joke of her family. Something about a crown of fleas? I don't know. Crown of what? Fleas. Woo! kind of looking at some type of a balance to it as well as some asymmetricalness. Let's do it. Lift. I think we're done. I'm gonna get a little extra heat on the punny. What'd you say? It's a good one. All right, I'm gonna show you guys this on the camera up close, and then I'm gonna reduce it. Brandon, you know how to do reduction, don't you, on the thing? All right, watch yourself on that torch. Let's take a quick peek at this up close. Crown of thorns, folks, crown of thorns. Now we're gonna bring that iridescence out. Go for it. A little too much, a little more. There you go, beautiful. A little hair more, maybe. Beautiful. Same as before, I want to make sure that this guy has a good heat on it. Oh yeah, look at all that iridescence on there, guys. I think we're ready to knock her off. So at this point, Brandon, you may want to get another matching paddle. It's underneath the marver there, so we got, we're putting it on two. Very careful because it's heavy. I'm gonna hand you this torch and I'll put that away. 
Once you hang the torch up, if you'll go over and uh, open the door for me, we'll get her into the annealing oven. Making sure I can shape this up so you kind of don't see, you guys, where it was torch where the punny was. All right. Oh yeah, look at that. Oof, it's in there. Close her up, looking good. Nice. Brandon, nice job. I think that might have been the first time you've brought me bits. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Congratulations. Nice job, guys. That was unbelievable. Turned out super cool. Now, the first thing we want to do before we, we just keep talking about that is, look, the glory hole door is open and all that heat's coming out. So we want to make sure we always close that back up to conserve the heat. Because we are going to be blowing some more stuff this afternoon. We don't want that getting cold, and we don't like wasting energy around here at the Glass Academy, guys. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, Marcy, any other housekeeping that you think we need to talk about? There's an annealer reveal coming up on Sunday, guys. So tune in. Usually it's, what, at noon on Sunday, Marcy? Do you remember? But we have an annealer reveal. Here she comes, right. folks. So... I do the annealer reveals on Sunday whenever I get around to it. I try to do it as early as possible, but I've done it as late as like 4 o'clock. So you're so. saying you might even get in here about 6.37 a.m. to do it as early as possible. Yeah, I you am heard not her, waking right? up. What? It's, <laughs> no. The earliest I wake up on a given week is 4 a.m. because of my cat. Oh. And then I go back to bed. All right. But, so yeah. Sunday, maybe you're thinking sometime between 10 and 2. That's the goal. Yeah, least. between 10 and 2, guys, the Anila Reveal. And for those of you folks who don't know what the Anila Reveal is, everything we made on our 136th show of The Gathering Point this past Tuesday, a couple days ago, we bring that out of the annealing oven and show you folks so you get the same feeling we do. When we crack those annealer doors and we see the true colors of the glass right before our eyes, you get to see that too. You also get to see if any of the stuff that we made is for sale, which there is that really sweet blue basket, double broken mold basket wine tumbler that Jake made. And we were talking about whoever gets that piece could also order like three more in different transparent jewel tones. So you've got a set of four wine tumblers and mold technique. I'm talking that is a nice Christmas gift right there, guys. But remember, the, the Gathering Point is a great show to learn and be educated by us, people who are professionals in the glass world, but it's also a great place to watch pieces that you want to commission being made before your eyes. If you can't drive to Dearborn, Michigan in Detroit, if you're from Denmark, South Africa, Australia, even uh, Illinois, maybe you're from New York or Chicago, you don't want to drive all the way here, but you want to sit in your living room and watch us make a custom piece for you, reach out online at glassacademy.com and go to the custom order form and write up what you're interested in. Doesn't need to be exact with your contact information and Jake will call you back and he'll custom design a piece with you on the phone, probably do some drawings and you'll love it and then he'll schedule you on a certain night. So if you gave that to somebody for a gift, if they don't watch it the night that you're scheduled, they can go back because every one of our 136 shows we've done is on Facebook now and can YouTube and can be watched again. So check them out, you guys. We're having fun here. We're going to be blowing glass all afternoon. We already missed Michelle and Jake. They're not here, but uh, they're here in spirit, and I hope they're having a great time, you guys. Comment back to us and wish them to have a great time down in Florida. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you guys. Marcy, you ready to, to shut stuff down when the time's right? 